it's all being being you know, powered by marketing and views. So I figured out early on that you know if you get views on something, um, you know, a million views, a thousand views, right. a certain amount of those people are going to be interested, mm -hmm. maybe to become a customer, maybe to become an employee, maybe to become an investor, and then you just end up with this like sales funnel that uh, you know you get the views. And then you remarket to the views, and then mm -hmm. you close on the sale. You can do that with all kinds of things. We're just doing it with investing. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Charles Slay here, and today you guys already know I have an amazing person here, and we're going to be talking about everything digital investments and entrepreneurship. And today I have an amazing guest. I'm going to let him introduce himself because this this is a big deal right here. One, because I'm going to be out here investing into it, but I want you guys to be aware of it as well. Can you can you just go ahead and, and, and introduce yourself and tell people what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. So my name is uh, Daliana Tiramani. I'm one of the founders of Boxable, and we're sitting here in the Boxable factory where we are uh, mass producing a, a new type of uh, housing product. Man, that's dope. Man, that's dope. So on, on our podcast, we talk about everything investing entrepreneurship, but really investing because that's our niche, right? Yeah, right. And I know that uh, you said that you were in Bitcoin previously, right? So I want, I want to really, before we talk about Box, I want to really tap in with the earlier you, <laughs> right? The older you and yeah. what, what got you into cryptocurrency? Uh, it's funny. So like, I think it was back in 2012, uh, my little brother actually bought a Bitcoin miner. Oh. Uh, and so I started looking at it and I became aware of Bitcoin. Mm. Um, he was the one that brought my attention to it. Right. And then mm. I eventually figured out that I could basically sell them for a profit, uh, kind of like wow. a, as a Bitcoin exchange. And just started small with that and then it kind of increased more and more of the daily trading volume until I had this big business, you know, buying and selling Bitcoin. Um, so not only did I have the business, but I loved Bitcoin and believed in it, so I actually put the profits of the business into Bitcoin. And back wow, then, that's, the- That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah back crazy. then, the, the price, uh, the cheapest ones I ever bought were around 250 bucks. Dang, I remember 2012, yeah, that was about. Dang, yeah, was that before it drastically dropped? When I got in, um, it was the peak of that bubble, which was about $1,000. And right. the Mt. Gox scandal, scandal was going yep. on, I believe. Yep. And then it, it crashed down, but the whole time it crashed, I kept buying. You kept buying, and then I it went up. It. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, As you should. Crazy. You buy the fear and sell the greed. Yeah. And you bought the, you bought the, you bought that, that whole bunch of fear in that yeah. one. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How do you manage a Bitcoin business? Like, how does that even work? Yeah, so uh, very quickly I found out that it was a highly regulated area mm -hmm. and that technically the business I was doing was considered a money service business and regulated by the federal government and FinCEN. And uh, there was a lot more to it than I initially figured out. So it just okay. kind of developed as we went forward um, and we started instituting various policies that, that we needed to. Mm -hmm. and, Basically, I was just buying Bitcoin directly from exchanges and wow. selling it to people um, in the U.S. and making it convenient for them to buy it, so they would buy it from me. And I was taking like between five to ten percent commission, essentially, on wow. each sale. Um, so we transacted, you know, tens of millions of dollars of volume. Sheesh. And, uh, yeah. Man, so you scaled this. This wasn't. This wasn't a hobby. This was a. This is a full-blown business company, like... Yeah, it was crazy. It started out uh, just very small. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually working as a laborer in a mattress factory. <laughs> wow. Um, at the time... Talk about um, small beginnings. Yeah, I was working in the mattress factory. Started figuring out Bitcoin on the side, but eventually I was like, all right, I got to quit the mattress factory. <laughs> he said <laughs> I, I can't keep up. Wage. <laughs> and then... Uh, you know, ran full speed with the, the Bitcoin. Uh, you know, my brother helped me with it. Uh, we basically, every day, like Monday through Friday, nine to five, we were doing customer service. Sorry, um, and then figuring out all the stuff on the, on the back end. Did you hire in, in uh, when you were doing Bitcoin and really building that business like you are now in Boxable, or was it just you and? Uh, nothing to it, this scale. 
Um, you know, we had a few employees, but it didn't really require much. Uh, now we have about several hundred people working in this factory and planning to grow really big from here. Man, that's crazy. So let's talk about how you transitioned out of that space into, you know, now and you know, building this amazing company, right? Which we'll talk about because then the, the stock side and all of that amazing things. But how did you really put, like, could I, because I would feel like Bitcoin, if I had that type of company, it's like a baby. Like, I wouldn't want to give it up. But how would, how was it hard for you to give it up? Like, how would, how was that transition? Um, you know, for me, I just kind of saw other opportunities and, and ran with it. And the new opportunities were bigger than the old one. And certainly what I'm doing right now is really the biggest thing I could possibly imagine. I, we have a product here that I think can disrupt a multi-trillion dollar market right. uh, and take take a big percentage of that market so i fully believe that you know this company could be, become one of the biggest companies in the world um that's the upside we're talking here so there's not much else i could be working on that could be bigger than <laughs> right exactly <laughs> yeah facts so let's talk about this let's talk about let's talk about box let's talk about how this company um is now a public traded company Right, so, or is it, let me not assume, is it a public traded company? Uh, no, we are not trading on the stock market, but we have received uh, qualification from the SEC for mm, a plus offering, and that allows us to sell shares to the public. Uh, so it's a way for the, the general public to get in early on a company before we actually do a real IPO. So that's pretty cool. We, we launched that about a, a month ago. It's going really well so far. Right, because I'm in it. So, <laughs> so how does it, how does that, how do you even measure, you know, cause right now I believe it's at around 80 cents. How do you measure that it's valued at 80 cents? Or I want to say value, but it's at 80 cents right now. How do you measure that? Like, how do you know that it's 80 cents? Yeah, so um, I guess you have uh, share price times shares equals company valuation. And then we started out with you know, much lower price when we started the company. And as we grew and made more accomplishments and de-risked it, mm -hmm. uh, we continued to increase the share price. Uh, and then, you know, eventually what will happen is hopefully we'll go public, it'll become tradable, and then really the market will determine the share price. But hopefully mm -hmm. by then, we've had a massive success here and that everyone, once they get that liquidity, gets it at a, a higher share price um, that they can sell at. That's kind of the goal here. So. You know, this factory that we're in now, I think, uh, you know, it's about 170,000 feet. We make about uh, two to three houses per day right now. But I want to get to a bigger factory as soon as right. possible. Something mm -hmm. 10 times bigger, something with serious automation, something with the vertical integration and the bulk purchasing power, and right. just get on the scale that you see with other manufacturing products. Uh, the best example is automobiles. Right. So cars, uh, most car factories are producing one car per minute. Mm -hmm. I think we can do that with houses. If, if we can produce one That'd house per minute, crazy. it's game over. We're, we're, we're taking over. One car per minute. That's Tesla level. Yeah. So you're trying, so you're, you're, you're pretty much going to be the Tesla of real estate, of construction, of, because Tesla is the top tier of cars. So you're going to be the top tier of real estate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's it's a good comparison. It's it's a it's a hardware startup manufacturing right. um, with some innovative stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love uh, you know Musk and Tesla and electric cars and all that. But I believe that what we have is uh, kind of a, a bigger level of, of innovation. Right. Um, so when you look at automobile manufacturing, uh, most of that stuff is kind of established. So Tesla came in, added. A lot of a lot of engineering improvements of course um, but mainly electric and self-driving um, so they added that in uh, to kind of existing car manufacturing uh, so that's great and they are a huge company as a result but what we're trying to do is shift an entire industry out of the stone ages of building houses one at a time with hand tools out in the weather right the into a factory with automation um, so if we do that, it's such a shift yeah, um, it in a whole industry. And you know, the, the best example, again, is automobiles because 
Um, Henry Ford is, is the guy who kind of pioneered the assembly line. Uh, back in the day when, when he did that, cars were built by hands. Mm -hmm. Once Henry Ford got this um, assembly line going for the automobiles, his cost to build dropped dramatically. Right. And he just right. destroyed all the other uh, hand builders exactly. and automobiles. Mm -hmm. So that's what we think we can do with housing, and we think our technology makes that possible. One, that's, that's just, I have no words. That's just deep. The fact that you kind of connected like the past to the present, and then went to the future with it because it is literally automation. By like just looking, just looking at it, when I was at, you know, we were doing the tour, I was like, man, it's step by step. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's not like a house, or even though it's in steps, but it's like you got to build the groundwork and the skeleton, the, or, the, or the foundation. Like there's a lot more intricate things, um, and of course we're not in it, so we don't know the the whole interest, you know, intricate, all the extra stuff that goes into yeah. building the house. But it's just crazy how it's just automation. I'm big on automation, right? So like automating the business, anything, right? So let's let me ask you this, and I and I want to stress this. You went into you know actually crowdfunding, really not using heavily your own capital, and here uh, we stress with trading and investing, not using your own capital, leveraging credit, leveraging other people's money, and etc. So can you talk about how leveraging other people's capital got you to where you are now? Yeah, so uh, when we started the company, you know, we did put several million of our own money in to get it up and running. Um, but of course, at a certain point, you know, we didn't have enough money to fund a, a massive operation. So at right. that point, we decided to start taking on investors. Um, I explored the traditional route of finding like institutional investors mm -hmm. and trying to get a big check from them. Right. But I just didn't have a great experience with that uh, for a number of reasons and eventually stumbled across crowdfunding. Right. Uh, so then we tried the first uh, crowdfund offering, which was uh, called Reg CF, allows you to raise a million dollars from the public. Uh, so we tried it and it worked. And I said, wow, this is um, pretty cool. And then I just kind of doubled down on that and kept pursuing more crowdfunding all the way until now we've raised about $90 million with this method. I think we've set a few records along the way and it's just been absolutely huge. We have now this huge fan base mm -hmm. of people uh, who have been fueling us to, to do this. We have you know, plenty of money to execute on all of our plans and you know, really just uh, an amazing opportunity you know, for everyone. I'm, I'm loving the crowdfunding. I don't really see any any downside to it. Um, it's been great. It's all been been you know, powered by marketing and views. So I figured out early on that you know if you get views on something, um, you know, a million views, a thousand views, right. a certain amount of those people are going to be interested, mm -hmm. maybe to become a customer, maybe to become an employee, maybe to become an investor, and then you just end up with this like sales funnel that uh, you yeah. know you get the views and then you remarket to the views and then mm -hmm. you close on the sale you can do that with all kind of things we're just doing it with investing man in a different way yeah i'm really just like appalled and stuck in all types of ways because i've learned about boxable i think i followed since when it first came out like right. when it when it was like like i wish my friend was here and we're gonna definitely make fun of him <laughs> when he's because we're gonna be like you should have been here you know what i mean um because him and i was like we're we're, we're gonna put like five thousand in and just call it a day you know what i mean and it's heavy it's just the fact that all you gotta do is buy the land the utility stuff you know plumbing and all that and then you just put a house on there no one does that you know what i'm saying not at least to the, the way that you're doing it you know what i mean and, it, and especially because tiny houses are so big now i know that really blew everything up and then of course you know uh i saw on one of the screens i saw like an apartment com apartment building or something like that so you're trying to do apartment buildings now units yeah. how do you even how do you even <laughs> skip, how do you even fold that like i'm just trying to understand so um the original idea was always a building system that could build most building types mm -hmm. we just decided to start with the casita as like the smallest room module just as an easy way to get started and focus on a simple product mm -hmm. so we started out with that casita uh marketed it towards backyard accessory dwelling units in california got a huge amount of interest from 
everyone will get a cylinder. But eventually we'll roll out a larger building system where we produce different rooms with different interiors and different sizes. So maybe we'll have a, a bedroom box, a kitchen box, a living room box, whatever, and, and a few different finishings and styles and sizes. Yeah. And then what you do is you start stacking connecting those together like Legos and you end up with almost any building type. So we think the system can build you know, a thousand unit apartment building or a single family residential. And essentially what we're doing is getting all the, the heavy lifting done for the builder. Right. So they just come in and kind of finish it up and it's good to go and dramatically save them you know, time. time and money. <laughs> Facts, yeah. That's crazy. Man, that I, I, just the fact that you're just stacking literally units on top of each other to make an entire complex. It just it just amazes me. Like I really see the vision um, and what you guys are doing. So man, this is just crazy. I don't I don't know if I don't even know if I got anything. It's just you really touched on a lot of things. There were questions that I was gonna ask that you answered. So it's just crazy how um, you know the model, you know what you're doing, you know how this. It's clearly you have an investing background, right? So it kind of helps in this sense as well. So I just find it really really amazing. Find it dope. So. Man, you guys heard it from the best. Like, I'm lost for words, right? So I really want you guys to check this man out. Look at all his content. Like, there's no way that you guys can't. Under, like, he's automating houses and building and construction. There's no, there's no other way but to invest. So I want you guys to invest. Follow this guy. Hit all his links in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Hey, fam. It's Char Slay here. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot of knowledge and if you guys are getting value, make sure you click the like, comment, and subscribe button and definitely hit the bell to get notified because I wanna make sure I drop exclusive updates every single day. And if you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below and hashtag Hey Slayer and I most definitely get to them when I can. If you wanna join my exclusive community where you get updates before anybody else does, quotes and etc. Definitely text the word socials to 201-490-3822. Family, I want to see you win. Peace out.